In your pressure washing business, you're going to need to keep a lot of tools on the truck. It's a maintenance intensive business. Your favorite tool is probably going to be an adjustable wrench because you're going to be torquing on a lot of fittings, replacing fittings, and doing the like. Today's video is going to be about two tools that I believe you don't need that a lot of people said, hey, get this. I've seen them commented everywhere on Facebook, forums. This is something you need. And one of them is going to be a rookie tool. The other one is going to be a veteran niche tool then I just don't believe you need either of them if throughout this video you can think of one or two tools that people have said that you needed in the past and you just found out that it was kind of a waste of money go ahead and help everybody out and put it in the comments so we can help the entire community out here to avoid superfluous superfluous purchases let's jump into it if you're wanting to start your pressure washing business off and you want to get all of that information in one place from the professionals, we have over 50 years of combined experience with Mike Vidan, Cody Yarbrough, Justin Rogers, and myself, and we built the How to Wash course. It has everything from how to mix chemicals, equipment, what you need to use and how to use it, property protection and safety, the processes of cleaning and the pressures you need to put on different substrates, experience, specialty chemicals. This is over six hours of training get the how to wash course i'll put the link in the description it'll be the first link in the comments as well now this first tool is the rookie tool the one that a lot of guys see it i promise you look i fell victim to it myself i did i think every single rookie sees this tool and they're like i gotta i gotta have it i mean like i i see it it looks awesome and and how am i going to clean that high up on a house or a building if I were to encounter one without this tool. This tool is the telescoping extension wand. Now there's a few reasons why this sounds right is because you feel like you need to shoot chemical or pressure up that high. And, and the cool thing is, is you do need to shoot chemical and pressure up high on buildings and homes, but you don't need the telescoping extension wand to do it. But when you're brand new, you believe you do. You believe that you got to put pressure on the house. Well, the cool thing is now we have something called soft washing and an even cooler invention has come out from Skunk Wash Works recently called the super pump. The super pump will shoot 50 feet and it's a soft wash pump. And soft washing has revolutionized the industry because you can put a higher concentration of chemical up on the building. So you don't need to use pressure. So the telescoping extension one has gone the way of the lowly Home Depot homeowner who doesn't really know what they're doing. But every single new guy sees it and it just makes sense, right? It looks cool, it's long, it looks like very important. So they buy it and about four months down the line, they find out that their deltoids are much bigger for using it once or twice and that they actually didn't need this in the long run. So the telescoping extension one, take it, throw it in the trash. I think I left mine at my parents' house. It's probably still behind the shop down there. So the second tool is a niche veteran type tool. And I say it's a veteran tool because the rookies are definitely not going to know about this tool. There's absolutely no way because I didn't know about it for the first uh, three years I was in business uh, because you don't need it. That's why I didn't know about it. And the reason you don't need it is because I'll tell you that in a second. But if you've ever been surface cleaning, right? You got your surface cleaner, the spinny thing, right? For the new guys, it, you, you hook it to your pressure washer, it spins, you run it across the concrete and allows you to do a lot of concrete in one swath when you're cleaning sidewalks or driveways or patios or anything like that. If you've ever used a surface cleaner on new concrete where they got what they call the cream is sitting on top, one thing that can happen if you don't have the right tips in your surface cleaner is that you'll run it too high of pressure and you will etch the concrete. Some of you guys have seen cute swirl marks right now. Hello darkness, my old friend. If you've ever done this, you're kind of in big trouble because you're either going to have to recoat that concrete, have somebody do it if you cannot blend it, or you're going to have to etch the entire thing 
with an acid wash of sorts to get it to blend correctly. Some guys came up with a little tool called a surface cleaner regulator. Now, now here's the first thing I don't want you to do. I don't want you to hate on these guys for the way it looks because it does look like it was pieced together from the hardwire aisle at Home Depot. And uh, you know that's because it was. It's got a little gauge on it, a little bypass valve. And when you turn the valve, it basically takes some of the water that was going to go to the surface cleaner tips and bypass bypasses those tips, wraps back around and goes through the top of the surface cleaner, therefore reducing the pressure going through the tips. Now, you don't need it. I've never needed. I've ran eight gallon a minutes forever, never etched concrete. That's because I run the right tips in my surface cleaner. And I use a very complex method, a proprietary complex method of avoiding the swirl marks and avoiding etching concrete. And I'm going to teach that to you guys today. Here's what I do. Whenever I see new concrete, the first thing I do is make sure that I don't put too much pressure on it because I don't want to remove the cream and I don't want to etch it. So here's what I do. I go up to my sh machine and there is a knob on the machine. And here's what you do. You, you see how high it's idled. And then what you do is you, you just go close to it and you idle it down. See, it's like there's, there's a, there's a, an idler knob that will idle the machine up and idle the machine down. It takes the RPMs down a bit. And what you would do is go up to it and you just idle it down a little bit. And if you have the right tips in your surface cleaner, you're not going to have to worry about etching that concrete. Now, if the concrete is brand spanking new, you know, maybe you would try to not use a surface cleaner on it anyway. Maybe you would try to just use a ball valve on it, something to where you can control the pressure even more. And I'm talking about brand new concrete that's, you know, five, six months old, right? We're not talking about years old concrete. We're talking about concrete that was just laid and really doesn't have any organic staining. If it's just dirt, maybe you just want to use your ball valve. So I'm going to let you, the contractor, make the choice, but this is two tools that I really think that you don't need. They got some hype about it. The brand new guys see the uh, telescoping, telescoping pole and they want to get it. The veterans have infatuations with attaching all of these little things to their rig to make them feel like they're more efficient, and I personally don't. Now, guys, if you have any other tools that maybe you've come in contact with in the field that just are not needed. Now, this is going to be probably a question for the guys who've been in business for a year, two years, something like that, because they've had time to live with those products and say, you know what, I really don't think this is very effective. Go ahead and comment those below. I would love to see what everyone has to say in the comments about those little tools that maybe sounded like a good idea, but at the end of the day, they just weren't. Guys, like this video if you got something out of it. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you're digging the channel and the content, and I will see you guys in the next video.